Welcome to CES 2021. I'm Gary Shapiro and today we're kicking off the first ever all digital CES. The first time an event of this magnitude has been available worldwide. The first time we can truly open our show up to every corner of the world. And right now, you're helping us make history. You'll want to stay tuned to hear some exciting announcements and you'll see several special guests. Over the show, you'll hear keynotes from top global CEOs. As you may know, CES is the world's most influential technology event, and it's owned and produced by the Consumer Technology Association. This week, you will be immersed in the technologies that will dominate the new decade and beyond. You'll see artificial intelligence, digital health, 5G connectivity, self-driving vehicles, smart cities, and that's just the start. The last 12 months have been a challenge like no other for everyone in the world. We've seen the strain firsthand on our health systems, our schools, our businesses, large and small. But in this time of uncertainty, technology has been a stabilizing, unifying force, keeping us connected to our schools, our jobs, our doctors, our families, and our friends. The pandemic has sparked astounding innovation in technology. Digital solutions are changing the way we do everyday things. AR and VR, powered by our brain waves and heart rate, are helping with stress and anxiety. Robots and drones deliver food, goods, and medical supplies. And video conferencing has just leapt out of the office and into our homes. It lets us stay connected to our colleagues and our friends and family. And of course, digital health is helping us stay healthy through AI-assisted diagnosis and monitoring. All of us in the tech industry understand. We must innovate to survive not only as companies or as an industry, but for our species. We need to innovate to make life better and safer for everyone. Our only constant is change, and technology is solving our toughest global challenges. And I believe tech will help solve more fundamental human problems in the next two decades than we have in the last two centuries. And that includes helping us connect despite distance and despite our differences. And just as technology helps us all work, learn, heal, and connect throughout this pandemic, that same innovation helped us reimagine CES 2021 to bring together the tech community in a meaningful way. This year, the 54th year of CES, our industry is convening on a truly global scale with new ways for you to meet, make deals, and get business done. With more, joining me now is Karen Chapka, the Executive Vice President of CES. Thank you, Gary. CES is where the entire world gathers each year to unveil new technologies in artificial intelligence, digital health, 5G, smart cities, gaming, robotics, and more. And for CES 2021, we're bringing CES directly to you. Today, I'll be joined by some incredible guests you're not gonna wanna miss. And all digital CES truly offers you some amazing ways to connect and access the latest innovations. This is a new and exciting experience where audiences and exhibitors connect and where you can view the latest technology advances from the comforts of your own home or workplace. We've selected Microsoft as our technology partner to help us create that experience. And you can watch groundbreaking announcements and get insights from the world's tech leaders. You can explore products and services based on your interests and business and through dynamic showcases and live demos. You can engage with brands large and small, business contacts and customers you care about through real-time chats and live meetings. And you will have the tech world's decision makers right at your fingertips. And to help you navigate the CES digital venue, be sure to check out our live anchor desk. Gary? With us now is Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella to share more about his vision for how we'll all work and connect in the future and for digital transformation more broadly. Satya, we go back a long ways, CES and Microsoft. This is the 15th time Microsoft has been featured in a CES keynote. You've launched major products at CES, including the Xbox and Windows 7. You've partnered with multiple brands here. And here we are now in a completely new world because of COVID-19. We've heard you say before that every company is a digital company. What does that mean? And how should companies be thinking about accelerating their own transformation coming out of this pandemic? 
Thank you so much, Gary, for the opportunity. It's great to be with you at the kickoff of CES. It's just been an unprecedented year, any which way you look at it. Uh, the constraints that have been put, the broader society and the economy uh, have been enormous uh, because of the pandemic. But at the same time, I am quite frankly stunned uh, by the level of economic activity and productivity uh, and even social connection we've been able to sustain in spite of all of these constraints. And that's, I think, thanks to the digital technology uh, platforms uh, and paradigm that we currently have. I mean, I even shudder to think what the world would have been if it, we didn't have all of this. And you see it, right? I mean, if you think about how gaming uh, and Xbox is changing and in terms of its ability, uh, both on the community side, the content side, side and reach side, or even, uh, you know, what Windows and Teams and PCs have been able to do for people who needed devices, right? Everyone in the household for remote education and remote work needed new devices, and we were able to sort of equip them with all of the tools they needed. Or industries like retail, even the smallest of retailers was able to build an app for curbside pickup, or a manufacturer in critical areas was able to do digital, you know, or complete lights out manufacturing using digital twins on Azure or healthcare. You know, we've talked about telemedicine for many decades, but now every outpatient visit will start with an AI triage tool, a telemedicine visit, and then an outpatient visit. So there's real structural change, Gary, uh, that I think is going to be driven because of the broad adoption of digital technology in our lives and in our workplaces. Satya, this CS is an actual live demonstration of the power of technology. Is this our new normal? And what learnings can you share? No, thank you for that question, Karen. It's a super important area where we're, again, collecting lots of data, studying it. I think the future of work uh, is going to, in fact, require a lot more flexibility. If there's one word, uh, that's the thing that I would pick uh, because I think by function, by geography, by industry, and by, over time, people will need more flexibility. Uh, how people collaborate, how people learn, how do we ensure the well-being so that we're not defining narrow metrics of productivity, but we're thinking about the well-being of all of our people uh, are all going to be important considerations. But if you even think about what you all at, at CES are doing in partnership with us in completely creating this new online way of delivering an event, creating that learning experience, that ability to foster the community using a lot of the cutting-edge technologies, whether it be your Azure Media Services or Teams or the analytics of Power BI, all coming together ultimately to create a complete new medium around CES and your core mission. That's what I think is going to be uh, something that's very exciting to see, which increases the scope and scale and impact of any institution and any organization going forward. Thank you, Satya. And thank you, Microsoft, for being such a great partner with CES and a longtime member of the Consumer Technology Association. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy CES 2021. This year, more people than ever around the globe will see our CES keynotes. And we have a great lineup of tech leaders for you. Hans Vesberg of Verizon discusses 5G and how we'll move our world forward. We have Mary Barra of General Motors, and she's sharing the company's transformational strategy for an all-electric future. Dr. Lisa Su presents AMD's vision for the future of high-performance computing. Best Buy's Corey Berry outlines her vision for the future of tech and why diversity and inclusion is so critical for business. And that's just the start. We also have Walmart's Doug McMillan explaining what it means to lead a massive organization in a period of economic disruption. And we have Anne Sarnoff of Warner Media Studios and Networks Group, and she's discussing the accelerated transformation of the entertainment sector with MediaLink's Michael Kasson. You're also going to hear from Microsoft's Brad Smith and Julie Sweet of Accenture and Michael Meebach of MasterCard. And they're going to be interviewed by Dan Roth on the trends that you can expect to see over the next decade. I hope you're inspired and explore the great programming we have laid out for you. And be sure to check out CSpace at CES, where we've partnered with MediaLink to bring you the latest trends affecting content consumption, entertainment, and consumer behavior. And for all of you loyal CES attendees, this year is definitely different. But an all-digital CES shows you the future of technology in action. Across the globe, we see world leaders on every continent committed to innovation and being a haven for entrepreneurs. At CES 2021, we're welcoming delegations from countries around the world, from France to Hong Kong, from Italy to Japan, 
from the Netherlands to South Korea and more. And here in the U.S., we're finding unity on a number of major tech issues. Both parties agree and the American public agree that we need high-speed broadband in our homes. And we must accelerate 5G deployment and extend broadband to underserved urban and rural areas. Our use of digital health technology has skyrocketed during the pandemic. We must keep the momentum going by removing unneeded and outmoded rules. And more of us are using self-driving deliveries and contactless transportation. But government needs to set national rules to promote investment and deployment of self-driving vehicles. But like the internet itself, innovation has no boundaries. It's bigger than one country or one political party. And it has the potential to lift everyone up. And that's why, to me, CES is such a special event. For one week each year, CES brings together the entire global innovation ecosystem to connect, do business, and shine a bright light on the benefits of consumer technology. And this year, with a new U.S. presidential administration and Congress, we hope to resume thoughtful, fact-based discussions about how tech is a force for good and why our industry needs reasonable guardrails so tech companies know what is legal and what is not, and that allows them to innovate. Tech is a tool, and we have the opportunity to use it for good and to improve lives. Doctors in China are using lightning-fast 5G connectivity to perform remote surgery on Parkinson's patients almost 2,000 miles away. Projects like Alphabet's DeepMind are solving decades-old biological mysteries thanks to advancements in artificial intelligence. And thanks to AI, we're witnessing the next generation of IoT as more applications and devices harness machine learning and connectivity to create the intelligence of things. Joining us now is Bridget Carlin, Global Chief Technology Officer at IBM and the new Chair of Consumer Technology Association's Executive Board to talk about the new possible that AI offers. The new possible with AI has the potential to add almost $16 trillion to the global economy by 2030. And it's being fueled by our access to vast amounts of data, advancements in software, and more powerful compute, all coming together, making it possible for us to do things we never could before. Simply stated, AI changes everything. AI is changing the way people work and live, how enterprises operate, and how entire industries transform. In this past year alone, we've seen AI solve some of the world's toughest and unprecedented challenges as a result of COVID-19. For example, our supply chains all over the world being upended and workers being overextended. AI is being used to predict and mitigate these disruptions while ensuring companies prioritize health and safety procedures for workers. And healthcare. AI is being used in many different ways from patient targeting for clinical trials to accelerating drug discovery, to identifying high-risk patients to enable providers to prioritize their care. And as we look beyond COVID-19, AI will be the driving technology behind social, economic, and environmental advancements, as well as the key driver in solving our toughest problems, like world hunger. Extreme weather, soil loss, and migration pressures continue to challenge the Earth's ability to produce food. AI will build a sustainable world by helping the agriculture industry predict and tackle environmental changes to improve our output. Speaking of the environment, there's over 5 trillion pieces of debris clogging our oceans and killing over 100,000 marine mammals a year. AI and data will track marine plastic to help develop more accurate and effective processes and policies to eradicate it. AI will help keep our oceans clean. And what about education? Imagine a multi-tiered AI interface that can mediate the way students engage with textbooks, teachers, and administrators. With AI, content can be updated dynamically based on the user's behavior to individualize the academic experience of each student. AI will create new opportunities for learning and extend affordable education to students all over the world. AI is one of the greatest opportunities of our time, transforming how we work and live and helping solve the world's toughest problems of today and tomorrow. We're living in an extraordinary time, a time when AI can make the imagined the new possible. Thank you, Bridget. Tech is a tool. 
Government and industry leaders can look for ways to double down and benefit from innovation. We need to reskill workers for today and tomorrow's in demand jobs. We must take a fresh look at immigration reform with an emphasis on high skilled immigration policy. And we must unlock opportunities to make our workforce more inclusive. Change through innovation can unite us. At the Consumer Technology Association, we work to bring together our vibrant, fast moving industry, finding and sharing solutions for a more diverse and inclusive workforce. Two years ago on the CES keynote stage, we unveiled our plan to invest $10 million in venture firms and funds focused on women, people of color, and other underrepresented startups and entrepreneurs. Since that 2019 announcement, I'm proud to share that we've made investments in five funds, and I'm so excited to make a new announcement today. Our newest fund to receive part of that $10 million is Plum Alley, a New York-based firm focusing on advanced technology and healthcare companies that improve lives and the planet. I'd like to welcome Plum Alley founder and CEO Deborah Jackson and co-founder and president Andrea Turner Moffat to talk a bit more about their group's focus on traditionally underrepresented entrepreneurs. Thank you. We have a commitment to investing in essential technologies and we support diversity, a woman from in the founding team from the STEM fields. Over the last five years, we've invested 32 million across 23 different companies. And all of those companies are doing important things in the world, like a, a platform with CRISPR gene editing, a company that's monitoring air quality to deal with air pollution, and other companies that have robotics. And so we are just so delighted to be partnering in this way with the CTA. And our vision for the future is that the next generation of high growth technology and healthcare companies that go public or get acquired are founded by world-class diverse teams. Equally as important, we believe in the value of bringing in a more diverse investor base into venture. We are honored to have CTA as an anchor LP in our Plum Alley Venture Fund. CTA has taken true leadership to put action behind their words to diversify GPs investing in venture, and also diversify capital going to more diverse founders in technology. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, CTA board. And thank you for the entire CTA team for believing in us as women GPs and believing in the mission of investing in women scientists and women technologists shaping the future of technology. Thank you, Deborah and Andrea. It's such an honor to partner with Plum Alley. Karen? Better unity, more teamwork. This means progress for everyone. More than ever, technology is providing the resources and leadership we need to improve sustainability, solutions that help unite us all. At CES 2020, we announced the World Bank Global Tech Challenge, a series of programs and competitions designed to showcase how technology affects sustainable development with a focus on healthcare, resilience, and bridging the gender divide. To date, we received almost 1,000 applications from around the world. Thank you so much. More than 15 companies were selected as finalists, and many of which are taking part in CES 2021. But I'm really proud to announce today that Butterfly Networks and Tricog as the winners of the Health Challenge. And we have MicroMentor by Mercy Corps as the winner of the Gender Challenge. We are pleased also to announce that we're expanding our partnership with the World Bank to recognize individual innovators, entrepreneurs, and government officials that advocate for the advancement of technology in the developing world. Over the next year, we will work closely with the World Bank on this new awards program, and we will announce the winner at CES 2022. Tech is our tool. Let's get safer, smarter, healthier, and happier. We can be more resilient, more compassionate, and more empowered. And now we must act, innovate, and unite. Technology enables this transformation, an opportunity for our industry to show the world that tech is solving some of today's and tomorrow's biggest challenges. So let's work hard this week and let's stay safe with new ways to meet partners, make deals, and get business done. You are empowered. 
Now and until February 15th, you can explore, engage, seek, and seize opportunities. You can meet with exhibitors, clients, and media across the show.